Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano, and uh, today we're going to talk about a follow-up to a product we first saw at CES in January. Uh, when we were visiting the MSI booth, they had a kind of a surprise demonstration of USB 3.1, which chances are a lot of people had, had never actually even heard of. It wasn't, didn't have kind of like the build-up and hype that we heard out of USB 3.0, yeah. which is unfortunate because I think 3.1 is as significant, if not more significant, of an upgrade uh, than 3.0. That's true. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm overstating that because oh. going from 480 megabits per second to 5 gigabits per second is a dramatic jump. That's a that's a 10x jump. This is a 2x jump yeah. in theory. But uh, it does offer some pretty compelling stuff. But what we did get is we kind of convinced MSI to, to send us that platform. We have the X99S Gaming 9 ACK, or maybe Ack. that's pronounced ACK, I don't know. But I'm going to go with ACK motherboard. Um, I don't think this board's for sale yet. It may no. be, or it's coming up soon. Just starting, if, if, if any. But this is their first board to integrate an Asmedia USB 3.1 controller. Do you remember the... Uh, it's a complicated number, string of numbers and letters for the actual controller. The, that There's controller one. is uh, 1142. The Asmedia 1142 mm -hmm. is the chip on here that gives you access to two USB 3.1 ports. Correct. Now, um, and then we used, they sent this kind of inner, what do we call this? this I no, that's that's, poser, like, a, that's not, like a RAID. It's like a, a prototype of yeah, it's a, prototype PCB. Of, a, of a RAID array. You can see there's two SATA connections here. Uh, and then the ASMedia chip on this is which one? Uh, that is a 1352R. So it's just a, a different ASMedia chip that supports. Um, it's basically USB 3.1 to two 6 gigabit SATA. Okay. In RAID. So it's two 6 gigabit SATA, and then MSI sent along a pair of, uh, what are, these are the Intel SSD 730s. Yep. 480 gig drive. So we had uh, 900 and something gig. 960. Uh, uh, RAID 0 array that gets created on this. And then they sent along a cable, although it is just, it looks more, looks like a standard cable, but it is a It USB is actually standard. It's, U it's the same cable you would it's have if it was USB 3.0. So it's USB 3.0 or 3.1 micro. Yeah, that's the right, micro which is end. The kind of the wider connection here. We'll have a better shot than what we're showing you here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you just have your standard USB connections on this side. Yeah. Uh, one blue, one white, one for data, and I guess this one's just to supply a little bit of extra power, it was, maybe. That was for extra power, but that's probably just the cable that they had, like, yeah. because this board has its own power, Molex supply, so okay. we, you didn't even need to use like that for this case. But Now, I do want to point out before we get into the performance and stuff is that we do need to separate. USB 3.1 is different than the USB Type-C connector. Totally different. Right, so this the, none of these connections have the Type-C connector, which is kind of the reversible, can't install it upside down. Well, um, you can, but it works. Well, you can't install it incorrectly, <laughs> Yeah, I guess I would say. And, and eventually you would see like that same connector like on your phone and on a motherboard so that you have one cable that doesn't matter which end is being plugged into which device or whatever. Yeah, that's just a different physical connector mm -hmm. it's it and actually it'll work with USB 2 and 3 and 3.1 yeah yeah so it's it's kind of an independent change right. and so, shift so that you, will be you don't need type C but on to this be board, able to use the 3.1 yeah speeds. the USB 3.1 ports are just they just look like standard yeah. USB ports from the type outside, A connector right? yeah just type A you know and they're they're blue like USB 3 are but these this has red USB 3 ports just part of the of the, the branding issues there so um, this is fairly early in terms of uh, performance testing. It's fairly oh, yeah. early in terms of drivers and firmware support. You know, we yep. expect all this to kind of change, but we did have some pretty positive experiences uh, with. We did using USB 3.1 for the first time. What kind of uh, transfer rates are we looking at here? So for just like regular file copies in Windows, we saw a little over 600 meg per second to. Copying um, to or copying from, I guess. From, in this So case. reading at 600 and something megs per second. Yeah, and the, writes, I think. and the writes were like just under to 496, just under 500 meg per second on the writes. Uh, but again, that's just like for a regular Windows file copy, which only goes so high on QDEV, that's like four or five QDEV, okay. depending, right? Um, and how's that compare to like USB 3.0, the best through USB 3.0 we can get today? Uh, the best we got on USB 3.0, actually it wasn't even with this on the other end. Uh, sure. It was with just a regular Samsung T1, the their, their USB 3.0. It's basically an 850 Evo behind a little adapter. Um, but that's a J-Micron adapter, and you know USB 3.0 has been around for a while now. So mm -hmm. we're already on third, fourth, fifth generation right. of those you know adapter kind of chips. 
Um, whereas this is the very first round seen from Asmedia. Sure. So, you know, nowhere. What were like, those rates on the USB 3.0 on the Samsung? Uh, 410. Okay. So 410 read versus 607 read is what yeah. you're seeing there. Yeah. Now, in theory, we ex you could expect that eventually you'd get more than that because these drives are capable of providing more than 607 yeah. megs now, per second combined reads. Now, the reason this needed to be a read is because like just one of these alone is not enough. Right. Right. It, it, might, it might get a little bit more than 400, mm -hmm. you know, compared to USB 3.0, because you're kind of bottlenecked more by the USB 3.0 than by the SATA. But you would only get like a small percentage more just with a single drive. Sure. So they did this RAID thing to try to get, you know, try to saturate the bus, so to speak, saturate yep. the USB 3.1. But we were just having a really hard time saturating it with this particular setup and with this first generation round of and we, we of did parts. have other results, like not just Windows file copy, but if you look at Addo benchmarks, for example, how yeah. high are we getting on that? Uh, the highest we saw in Addo was over a little bit over 700 meg per second okay. on reads and writes. Okay. Um, so you know, higher than the 607 we saw, like another another hundred. But theoretically, USB 3.1 should actually be, uh, I don't want to say much faster, but you know, maybe another half again gain compared to what we saw. That's um, significantly faster. Should, in theory, we could go to a gigabyte per second. A little over, yeah. Yeah. Um, the the max theoretical, even in the USB 3.1 uh, in their specs, uh, there's a couple of things going on there. Um, even though all the PR things you'll see will say double the speed, double the speed, it should actually work out to like 2.4 times the speed. Um, because of changes in they changed how the data gets encoded before it goes over the wire. So they doubled the speed that the bits that the basically the wire can transition between a one and a zero. That's double. But they also increased a lot of the other efficiency stuff that was uh, like USB 3.0 and below is actually very inefficient. It just like t it just tosses away. So 20%. we're talking in terms of like software overhead. Kinda yeah. Or, yeah. or encoding encoding overhead, not really software, but in the controllers and the yeah, just just things that get done so that because uh, you're trying to transfer data across a, a pair a twisted pair of wires without a clock signal. So there's some special encoding tricks you have mm. to do to make sure that you can tell that there's you know. So that is the, for synchronization, for, sure. you know, to, so the other end knows what the... What so not only did they going. double the theoretical peak bandwidth, but they actually improved efficiency... They did. ...as well, so... Yeah, so all I that math... I think you said in there, the, you, you mentioned 2.4x is actually what you should see if it, once, once we kind of work everything out in terms of controllers on boards and yeah. products, controllers on devices. Right, and you, know. and, you know, you're kind of pushing a lot of other things like to their limit there like you're trying to move data like you know previously the connections to USB devices motherboard manufacturers weren't really prioritizing that because mm -hmm. USB could only go so fast and now when you just like double it right right and even and even um, until recently USB 3.0 controllers on motherboards wouldn't necessarily have full bandwidth like as far as yeah. the PCIe lanes yep. going yeah, to that, them that occurred on lots of motherboards uh, early motherboards right yeah so yeah. really there have been bottlenecks even you know outside of the whole USB link like that whole pipeline, mm -hmm. right, to and from the device. Um, so there's kind of still more catching up taking place, right? I mean, it's interesting because we, we know Thunderbolt is out there. It has a yeah. 10 gigabit per second iteration, That's and it true. seemed to get to that maximum efficiency quicker because it was PCI Express, yes. essentially, right? So it didn't have the, the complication that USB has. Because remember, all this is backwards compatible. These USB 3.1 ports will support USB 3 and USB 2 devices mm -hmm. just fine. Um, Thunderbolt didn't really have to deal with that. so. This is a, an interesting early look at USB 3.1, but I think it's fair to say that we expect this to get better yeah. as we kind of progress through generations. Now, will what will it actually look like when we actually see it first for sale? When this motherboard's for sale, when we actually see the first USB 3.1 devices, they won't look like this. <laughs> Hopefully they the won't. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how that, how that works and then how long it takes for everybody to kind of catch up and yeah. how that gets implemented in a product. So uh, thanks to MSI for sending out the uh, X99S Gaming 9 ACK motherboard as well as the necessary equipment to uh, get our first taste of USB 3.1. We have the full review with all the benchmarks uh, and some more commentary from Alan on the website at PCPro.com, which we've got a link in the description below. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.